I chose not to wear high heels today. Not because they're uncomfortable, even though they are, but because when I wear high heels, my legs start trembling like crazy, and they already are. I don't know if you can see it, but they're, they're, they're like uh, pasta right now. And so this is caused because I have stage fright, and I think all of you do too, and you guys can understand what I'm going through right now. So yes, I'm freaking out. My heart is beating so fast. I am sweating and, as I mentioned, trembling like crazy. But that's not the only thing that's causing me to freak out right now. I also have anxiety. So I am overthinking everything that I'm saying right now. What if I mess up? What if I stutter? What if I trip or something? Now, one in four people have some kind of mental illness. There are people in this crowd who are suffering, and we are unaware of it. Not because we don't want to, we don't want to help them, but because we don't know how to understand it. And hence, why I want to introduce the concept of having a mental illness. And so, I want to start with a personal story. I have never been a, an emotionally stable person. My parents have anxiety, and it's a genetic, a genetic disorder, so I have anxiety. And last year was the most emotionally unstable year of my life. It started out with school. I was a freshman, becoming a sophomore, and so the workload tripled. I would stay procrastinating till 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and I would wake up the next morning freaking out because I still hadn't finished all the work I had to do. And so with that, I started feeling that my grades were dropping, I wasn't trying and reaching my potential, and I started becoming insecure. On top of that, I also did basketball. Now, if you ask me if I like basketball, I'll answer, it's okay. I'll, I'll do it occasionally. It's not something I really enjoy. But I had been on the team for two years, and the fact that I was still a bench warmer did hurt me. I put my effort into it, and I felt that my efforts really didn't matter. I would just stay warming up the bench regardless. And so these insecurities only increased. I started hating who I was. It spilled into other aspects. I didn't think I was pretty enough. I remember once at a party, I, was, I saw some friends from an old school and they asked me to take a picture. And this random girl go, went to talk to them and they all of a sudden started flirting with her and I felt so insecure. Am I not pretty enough? Can I not be flirted with? <laughs> and so I didn't feel physically good enough. I didn't feel smart enough. I felt that my friends only took pity on me. They didn't really want me there. And this self-hatred and this emptiness only started deepening even more. And so, I began cutting myself, like anyone who's in my situation. It started with one cut, because I was so afraid. What did I just do? I took a knife and just cut my, my arm. And then two weeks later, it became five cuts. Two days later, it became 10 cuts on both arms. I felt like a burden. I felt I didn't deserve to be here. No one liked me. I didn't like me. Why was I here? And one day, my sister saw my cuts. And she told my therapist. And my therapist told my mom. And so my mom didn't let me cut, clearly. And I felt I couldn't numb the pain anymore, which only put me in a worse situation. When I would, when I would start overthinking things, I would always cut myself. And so when I would overthink it, I wasn't allowed to. I didn't know what to do. I was in this position where I was just dying, and I couldn't escape it. And so I realized I really needed to improve, and I couldn't get anyone to help me. So I tried to do little things that did slowly have an impact. I started writing all the negative thoughts I had. I would burn those negative thoughts when my mom wasn't home, so I could you know, have a little fire and wash away all the, negative, all the negative pain I was feeling. Here are some photos, by the way. This is a picture of me. And I thought it was really interesting to put up because it looks like I'm really happy, but I was dying inside already. And anyways, going back, I would try to put these negative thoughts I had after burning them, and I would try to convert them into positive thoughts. I'm not good enough, I would think. No, Marina, you're good enough. You're more than enough. <laughs> and then later, I tried to meditate. Meditation did help because you stay in this position of just living in the present and you don't really think about anything, so that did help me a lot. And so after about six months, I started thinking, okay, I'm okay with myself. 
I don't hate myself, but I'm still not in favor of myself. And so I kept on emphasizing those, those little exercises, Wake up, waking up in the morning thinking, I am good enough. And so I can say today, I am proud of who I am. Yes, I have my flaws, but that's OK. Everyone does. And hence, because I try to reach out to people, people didn't really know how to react. Some would think that I was just overreacting. What do you mean you're, you think you'll overthink everything? It's fine, calm down. Or others just didn't know how to react. However, reaching out is not overreacting, and hence where the misconception comes in. There are people, people in this crowd, who are carrying weights. Every day they wake up with something heavier inside. Every day they feel like they're drowning their own self-hatred, and we don't even know about it. And so I want people to realize that you can help them pull them out of that self-hatred and teach them how to love themselves again. And so I would like to show you what it's really like to have some kind of mental illness. Depression. As Psychology Today has said, it is a brain disorder characterized by persistently depressed mood or loss of interest in activities causing significant impairment in daily life. What are the symptoms? Anxiety, apathy, hopelessness, loss of interest, and a feeling of emptiness. But what it's really like to have depression is more than just a scientific definition. Here are some quotes I found also on Psychology Today. A total loss of who you are. Like mourning the death of someone you once loved, you. When you look in the mirror, you see only dead eyes. There is no spark, no joy, no hope. You wonder how you will manage to exist another day. Think about it. You're not yourself anymore. You're not the person who would actually enjoy being who you were. You become your enemy, enemy instead of your best friends. Anxiety. The scientific definition is anxiety disorders are a group of mental disorders characterized by a feeling of anxiety and fear. Anxiety is a worry about future events, and fear is a reaction to current events. What are the symptoms? Feeling of panic and fear, what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> Not being able to be still or calm, or a shortness of breath. Here are some quotes. It's irrational. We just need to get through what we need to get through. I wish people knew how badly I wish I could be like everybody else, and how hard it is to be affected by something that can bring me to my knees every single day. One little thing you say to someone who has anxiety can impact them throughout the rest of the day. For me, personally, I remember when someone maybe, I interpreted what they said was cold, I, would, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I would take the knife and go cut myself. And so it really does impact a person. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive-compulsive disorder is an anxiety disorder in which people have unwanted and repeated thoughts, feelings, ideas, sensations, or behaviors that make them feel driven to do something. Often the person carries out the behaviors to get rid of the obsessive thoughts, but this only provides temporary relief. Symptoms? Repetitive movements, realistic behavior, compulsive hoarding, or impulsivity. And here is a quote. It's like a faucet dripping over and over. And you keep having these irrational thoughts, and you know they're rational. But you just keep having them. And they are so important to you. At that moment, it's led all by fear. Think about that. Think about repeating the same thing over and over again, because you can't escape it. It's like a bully in your head, but you're the bully. And so. When people do have the courage to bring up they're not mentally OK, it must be respected and, if possible, aided. Here are some very basic everyday situations in which you may be actually hurting someone and you're unaware of how much you can affect them. Here's for depression. When, someone, when you want to go out with your friends and your friend is depressed and you invite them to go out and they say, I can't because they just physically cannot leave their bed. They have no motivation whatsoever. 
Don't say just get over with it and make them go. It's so much harder than that. Anxiety. This is personally what I go through all the time. Before a test, I freak out. And so I literally study for the test over and over for about two weeks. And even on the day I wake up early to study, I try to meditate and I try to cram everything and every little word and every little detail to get it right. And I've heard comments like, it's fine. It's chill. And it really isn't. <laughs> OCD. When I was in middle school, I would draw on the board a lot or just draw my notebook. And there was always this one boy who would come up to me and he would try to complete my drawing because I would draw it and keep a little space between the closing and beginning of the drawing. That's just a habit of mine. It's not on purpose. And he'd always come and try to fix it and say, it gives me OCD. Are you saying it's some kind of joke? You only get OCD when it's with drawings? It's not necessarily like that at all. And so if someone does tell you that they're mentally ill, you have to respect it. And you have to help them, as I already mentioned. Here are some ways how. First, you can check if they're getting the help they need. Check if they're going to a therapist or if they're taking medications that can help them. Two, respect and show concern. You can do this through asking questions and slowly supporting them. Three, if they feel that they're making some, they can't yet open up entirely to you and they still need their distance, understand and be okay with it. Four, treat them with empathy clearly. And this also connects to the last, which is avoid being pushy or making judgments, which is the most important. You cannot, just because a person says they can't go out because they're depressed, don't jump to conclusions that they're just lazy. Because it's not that. It really isn't. <laughs> now, I do understand there is a lining between trying to get help and using your mental illness as an excuse. So if you're someone who's mentally ill, just be aware, because you may try to take advantage of the situation and make it as an excuse. So if you, you can do this, you can notice if you're doing this, if you, one, always mention that you're mentally ill to get something in return. I'd actually do this a lot last year to my friends and my mom. Um, whenever I wanted to go out, actually, one time specifically, we were coming back home, and I asked my mom if I could go to a party that night, because all my friends were going. And she didn't let me, because I wasn't being a good daughter that day. And she, she just prohibited me from going. And I got so mad, and I would keep on throwing the, the term of anxiety across the room to say, like, to get her to feel bad for me. I have anxiety. I'm going to freak out if I stay here. I won't be able to even do my work. And she would just look at me with that face. <laughs> Look at that face of confusion. What do you mean that you have anxiety? That's not an excuse. Another form, which I'd also do, and to some of my friends, actually, is use it as a form of self-pity. Oh, no. I'm depressed. Bring me this. Bring me that. Do this and that. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. And so if you're someone who's mentally ill, you have to be aware. If you're using this, if you're using your mental illness against people to get what you want, because I didn't notice until my mom brought it up and until my friends brought it up. So you have to be careful with that. Therefore, I wanted, to, I wanted to mention how mental illnesses are still a taboo. People, they can't understand what it really means. And, and to be honest, it's something much more than its, its scientific definition. And so when someone does bring it up, it has to be respected. And so I hope this TED, talk, this TED Talk has brought some kind of awareness to you about the topic. And if you're someone who is mentally ill, it's going to be all right. Try to find the help that you need. Don't give up. You're not in a hopeless situation. Thank you. Thank you.